Take an MP4 player, or better still a tube amplifier, and do the following. Turn up the volume until it won't go any farther. Now, nothing's playing on your MP4 right now, right? So what you're hearing is nothing, right? I doubt you'll hear nothing. You'll hear noise, a lot of noise. Noise, however, is a subjective term. One man's noise is indeed another man's music. You could say that you're listening to electron singing. Every transistor, every resistor, every IC has its own song when you apply an electric current to it. In other words, it sings. The mystical work Parikshira, chapter of song, lists the quintessential aspects of animal, vegetable, and astronomical life in this world. All these elements are referred to as elements of song. Back in the 1960s, there was a famous film in which a photographer unwittingly photographs a murder. He's photographing in a park and he comes home and he develops the film and he starts to analyze the contact strips, the photographic proofs. He sees something under a tree that he can't quite make out. So he takes the negative and he blows it up as much as possible. He enlarges it. Larger and larger and larger enlargements of this little piece of film. And in the end, his trained eye detects a gunman hiding behind a tree. But to the audience, the enlargement of the picture looks no more than a, a bunch of dots, like a pointillist abstraction. Film is made up of silver crystals. If you blow up a negative enough, the image will yield to the background fabric of the film itself. It's noise, so to speak. Or is it its song? When Bell Labs built a giant antenna in Holmdel, New Jersey in 1960, it was part of a very early satellite transmission system called ECHO. However, two employees of Bell Labs, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, had their eye on the Holmdel antenna for quite a different purpose. They realized it would make a superb radio telescope. At first, they were disappointed. When they started their research, they couldn't get rid of a background noise. It was like trying to tune into your favorite radio program when it's obscured with noise and static. Everyone assumed it came from the telescope itself, so they checked everything, trying to find the source. They even pointed the antenna right at New York City, because there's no bigger urban radio noise than the Big Apple. It wasn't urban interference. It wasn't radiation from our galaxy or extraterrestrial radio sources. It wasn't even the pigeons in the horn of the antenna, because Penzias and Wilson had kicked them out and even cleared away their droppings. What was it then that they were hearing? Eventually, they came to the staggering conclusion that what they were hearing were the very first moments of the creation of the universe. The discovery in 1963 of the cosmic microwave background noise of the Big Bang was the first compelling evidence that the universe was born at a definite moment. A sound amplifier playing nothing, electrons singing. A giant blow-up of a photograph silver crystals singing, and the most distant and cold whisper of the song of the world's creation. Go beneath the superficial descriptive level of any medium, be it sound or sight, or listen to the center of the universe itself and you won't find silence, you'll find song. That song is the sound of every rock and every bird, of every electron and star doing the bidding of its creator. There is no silence in the heart of silence.